so welcome to what is probably the first uh, tutorial of our signal study group and i'd like to talk about uh, continuous and discrete time signals so what you see here is a continuous time signal and as the lecture says a continuous time signal is one in which uh, the independent variable t is defined for a continuum of values what this essentially means is suppose i take time as 2 and t as equal to 3 and if I magnify the signal, okay, if I magnify the signal, if I, so let me just draw that. And this is two. This is three. If I magnify the signal, I can get probably the value at 2.6 at time t equal to 2.6. Okay, so t is equal to 2.6, and I don't have to stop there. I can magnify it further. Okay, and get. So this is 2.6 and this is 3. I can get the value at let's say 2.65 and I can magnify even more and I can get I can get let's say 2.659 and I can go on and on and on. There is no limit. I can keep getting va any value I want. So that what that's what is that's what continuum means essentially. Um, you can get any value between any two points. There is there is there is no limit to that. Um, on the other hand, let's look at a discrete time signal. A uh, discrete time signal is only defined for integer values of um, of the independent variable. Uh, here, the independent variable is n. Okay, and uh, as you can see, I've, I have written n as one or two, three, four, five, up to nine. Okay. Similarly, I have negative one, minus two, minus three, up to minus six. Okay, so that's a discrete time signal. Uh, I cannot get the value at let's say 2.1. I don't know what the value of x of n is at 2.1. I don't know the what the value is at let's say 5.5. I do not know that. So that's what a discrete time signal is. A discrete time signal is also called a discrete time sequence um, because this is essentially a sequence of numbers. Okay, so uh, however. Uh, continuous time signal cannot be a sequence of numbers because you cannot you cannot talk about every number between every point there are infinite such numbers so you need you need something like an equation however a discrete time signal can be defined using numbers so let's just assign some numbers to this let's say this the value at 0 is 5 let's say this is 4 3 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so this is let's say again 5 this is 6 6 uh, 5 4 3 okay. and another notation for uh, discrete time signals uh, another way to write them down is just to list list the numbers itself so this is basically 3 4 5 6 6 5 5 4 3 3 4 5 6 7 uh, Eight and nine, and we enclose this in curly braces. Um, also, we need to uh, know where the origin is. The origin is here, so we use a little arrow over here. So this is another way to um, write a discrete time signal. Um, we also know there's a notational difference. Um, a, a continuous time signal is denoted like this. We use parentheses. Uh, the independent variable is usually t uh, for time. However, uh, if you are measuring, let's say, water pressure uh, in a swimming pool, um, this we would rather use a letter d to denote depth. But we use uh, the same letter just for consistency. Um, so similarly, in discrete time, we use square brackets uh, brackets and the independent variable is n and that's that's how and that's that's the difference those are the differences between continuous and discrete time now let's uh, relate the discrete and continuous continuous time uh, si signals so what we have here is a continuous time signal this is t and this is let's say x of t and we want to find um, what is e what is the equivalent of x of equivalent x of n. So if I had to draw x of n, what would it look like? So what we can actually do is superimpose another set of axes. And as we just discussed, a discrete time signal 
is defined at only specific points of uh, the time axis so let's just take specific points right now so this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 and 6 this is the origin this is negative 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 okay and like that and what we do is okay this process is called sampling and it gets that name because we sample values of the continuous signal at specific points in time so we sample the value at 1 we sample the value at 2 we sample the value at 3 4 5 and 6 similarly we have the value at minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 and minus 5 and let's take this off a little bit okay so this is oh, oops I forgot the value at 0 so this is the value at 0 so if you see um, this is in effect um, the the discrete time counterpart of this continuous time signal and this process is called sampling um, this is dealt with a, a lot more detail much later in the course and there is also a reverse process where you can get the continuous time signal from the discrete time signal so um, visually this is just connecting the dots okay but mathematically uh, there's a condition for this to work and we'll look at all that later so now what's a digital signal i used to think uh, a digital signal and discrete signal are the same i later on realized that they are not uh, let me draw a discrete time signal again okay so I'll, I'll give enough space between each of the integer points so this is one sample this is another sample this is one more and here is one more okay so what we did um, in order to convert a continuous time signal to a discrete type signal what what we did is uh, discretize the time so we chose only specific values of time so we selected only one two three and four but we didn't talk about the y-axis the value of x at each value of n so if you look closely this can be any value it can be two point one if you if you want to be more precise it can be two point let's say one two three four five seven one two okay, and it can go on it could be the value of pi which has uh, which which is not recurring it could be root two which has infinite number of uh, points after the decimal digits after the decimal um, but we can't store that in a computer uh, a computer has limited memory uh, it, it has limited precision so what we do is we also uh, discretize the value of x and this process is called quantization so we might we might only choose we might only store this digit or we might only store these two digits okay and uh, let's let me just draw that again okay, so this is one this is two three and four okay now what I wanted to say is we may be able to only store the value at one we may be able to only store the value at two three and four our computer or a storage device may not be able to store the value at 1.1 so we can just draw these lines like this so and we pick the val the number which is closest to each of these samples so the number 2 is closest over here so our first sample point is 2 it may have been actually 2.13 but we, we, we pick 2 this for all you know may have been 1.41 for this may have actually been root 2 but but we pick the value 1 this could have been 3.7 or yeah it could have been 3.7 but we pick the value 3 this again may have been root 2 I like the number root 2 I guess and but we select only 2 and this process but and this process okay and this process is called quantization so quantization okay and
and what this means is we are actually discretizing the value of the of the dependent variable we are discretizing the value of x okay we are, we, we we cannot we cannot have any value of x we please and this is this is the difference between digital and discrete time signals